My name is Shaheen, and I'm the engineering team lead for Web at Bash. Thank you for having me. Today, we're going to focus on how we use Trampy at Bash to drive e-commerce content. We will cover some of the key learnings and mistakes that we've had along the way. A good starting point is, what is Bash? Bash is one of South Africa's leading shopping and lifestyle platforms. You can think of it as a mall in your pocket, a place where you can shop over 500 brands and 40,000 products. We are the online home to many of the most recognizable stores in South Africa. Bash brings together the best in fashion wear and jewelry all the way to homeware and technology. Bash did not always exist. The Fushini Group ran a total of 17 individual e-commerce websites and two mobile apps. From January 2022, we embarked on rewriting all these platforms into a single site and app. With such an aggressive timeline of getting Bash to beta in seven months, it left us with a question. All these individual stores still needed a mechanism to visually merchandise their products and promotions on Bash. They still needed their own home within the Bash platform. This is where Strappy fits into the equation. In order for stores to visually merchandise their products, they needed a system to update their content in real time. With all hands on deck in rewriting our app and website, we needed to leverage a solution that would allow us to move quickly with little engineering effort. Without Strappy, I firmly believe we would not have hit our deadline. The next part of the store focuses on our Strappy implementation. What you see on the left is a storefront. For all those individual sites that we migrated, this represents their home on Bash. At its essence, a storefront is a page with a series of one or more components that flow from top to bottom. This is very easy to model in Strapi. It is a repeatable component and contained within that component is a relation to a single collection. Given the varying nature and needs of each store, that collection is very complex with multiple dynamic zones and subcomponents to meet all use cases. As can be seen on the right, many variations can be produced and each of these major variations has its own set of toggles and drop downs uh, producing an even greater number of rendering results. Before getting into a demonstration, I want to discuss our high level architecture. The storefront collection managed in Strapi is queried via Strapi's generated REST APIs. This feeds into a small express app, our backend for frontend. This backend for frontend does most of the heavy lifting. It interfaces with our catalog APIs to fetch product data and transforms the Strapi data into a more compact and easier format for our front ends to work with. Our app and websites query this backend for front end and render storefronts based on this data. I'm now going to do a little demonstration. In this demo, I will be building out two components for a storefront. As you can see, we have Strapi running locally on the left and we have the website running locally on the right. The first component we're going to build out uh, is a spotlight that advertises Bash. So I'm going to click to add a new header and choose a spotlight. I will then choose uh, to add an image. This image has already been added to Strapi. I'll then choose to fill in the copy fields. As well as our call to action of find it on Bash. And we will let this link out to our Instagram page, Friends of Bash. I'll then hit save. I'll grab this product. Uh, I'll grab this ID of 1946 and come over to our web app and add this to the URL. And as you can see, we've, uh, we've built out a spotlight that advertises Bash. The next component I'd like to build for our storefront is a product carousel. So I will remove the spotlight here and choose to add a carousel and select the product carousel. The, I'm going to input an ID 1385. This would have been um, an ID that a user would have fetched from our internal system uh, and it represents a a curated list of products. 
it is the equivalent of a window shopping shelf that you would see on many e-commerce sites. I'll then hit save and we will refresh our web uh, preview. And we now have a product carousel rendering based on the ID 1385. As can be seen, it is very easy to mix and match uh, the spotlight and this product carousel and repeat these components multiple times to build up an individual storefront. The next section of this presentation is going to cover some key learnings. In moving as quickly as we did, we took many shortcuts along the way and inadvertently caused our users and developers a lot of pain. It is within this frustration where I think our key insights lie. The first key insight I'd like to cover is that flatter models are better. In order to power the many variations of a storefront that you saw earlier, we had quite a complex collection in Strapi that can be seen on the left. It contains many reusable components and up to six levels of nesting at times. This code reusability was great for speed in the beginning, but terrible for making changes as the project matured. An example of an unintended change can be seen in the diagram in the top right. The component marked in purple is used in many places. If you'd like to change it in A, there's no easy way to do this, but accept that the change will propagate to both B and C. This has left us with a confusing interface where fields don't always make sense. We can't enforce labeling and form validation at a granular enough level. It has also been difficult to incrementally upgrade such a massive component as the surface area that a change can affect is large. We, we are now restructuring our Strapi model, breaking down this one component into an ideal flatter structure with many collections that we reference via relations. This allows for a cleaner interface and a clear way to version and upgrade components. Flatter models just allow for easier changes. The second key insight I'd like to cover is that everything is changeable in the long run. Strapi only met 80% of our use case, but it was still a very high leverage decision to use it given the amount of time it would save us over building a bespoke system. I'd like to illustrate some suboptimal parts of the system. In example one, we force users to interact with confusing hex codes to do simple tasks such as changing color. These kinds of paper cuts should be abstracted away from our Strapi users. In example two, a user has to interface with an external system to fetch an ID that corresponds to a collection of products only to paste that into Strapi. Ideally, this should all take place within a single tool. Example three, prior to custom components, there was no real way for for us to give users something as simple as dropdowns populated from an external API. In order to do this, we now have a series of reference tables that we periodically sync back to Strapi from our internal APIs, forcing us to maintain multiple sources of truth of this data. The Strapi roadmap has since caught up to our ambitions with custom components, allowing us to solve all three of these problems. It makes it easier to take shortcuts now to deliver value if you know problems are all solvable in the long run. The third key insight I'd like to cover is that optionality is good up to a point. The diagram on the left hand side is the same architecture diagram I presented earlier. The reason we structured our project this way is we didn't have time to do a full 100% evaluation of Strapi. So we optimized for optionality. If Strapi didn't work, we could switch it out later. We wanted to avoid vendor lock-in by having our BFF do the data transformations and interface with our catalog APIs with Strapi and the BFF moving in lockstep. This was very limiting for our developers as you do not get access to the great entity service and query engine that Strapi provides. We've since realized that Strapi is here to stay with us and moving forward, there's no reason Strapi cannot function as our backend for frontend directly for our storefront feature set allowing us to leverage all that it has to offer. Since launch, the dynamic ability that Strapi offers has just led to greater appetite to drive more content from the system. There's a lot that we have implemented uh, via Strapi that could not be covered adequately in a lightning talk, from sitemap generation all the way to custom content approval flows. This is only the beginning of what we plan to drive from the CMS. 
I'd like to thank you all very much. I hope you gained value from listening to some of the learnings we had during our project. Have a great rest of your strappy conf.